Typically, when I think of alien gear, I'm thinking of their inside the waistband options, you know, full leather, American made, pretty affordable. Uh, it didn't really occur to me that, you know, there would be outside the waistband options. Of course, you think of hybrid holsters, which this is basically a hybrid, um, so to speak, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. But this is an outside the waistband option. This is their cloak belt holster. Now, they do have one that is called the outside the waistband holster. That's basically completely uh, leather and kydex, uh, so uh, that's that combination. But <clears throat> this one's a bit different, a little bit more involved, and I think a little bit more versatile. So, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, get over to the table after I go ahead and roll some footage of me uh, using this thing. Okay, so as you saw there in the uh, intro, I have worked a lot with this holster, uh, at least for the fact that I've only really had it for about a couple of weeks, and uh, I've had a lot of time to uh, work with it, wear it a lot, and stuff like that, so uh, I have worked with this holster more than I typically work with my everyday carry holsters, if that tells you anything. So. Uh, typically, I'm bouncing around a lot between carry holsters and training uh, class holsters and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, as I said, Alien Gear is really known for their hybrid, you know, leather uh, holsters. Uh, they've always had a pretty good reputation as far as being uh, good economically. Now, there are other outside the waistband options like the Shapeshifter, um, a, a complete leather holster, but this is a cloak um, cloak belt holster. So the uh, purpose behind this is to typically uh, to basically keep a low profile. It has no leather on it, and also it needs to be able to be concealable. And so the construction that this uh, holster has is uh, really catered around the idea of keeping a low profile, being durable, uh, having a good balance, and you know being cost effective. So. The construction of this holster is basically made up of four materials plus the shell. So the four materials are basically what they call, uh, first off, their alien skin right here, which is basically a rubberized texture. And you can see here that it has not worn very much uh, from my usage. So that's actually pretty good. And you can see here that it is actually hand stitched. Uh, they not hand stitched like a thread needle they have machines and there's videos on their website I encourage you to go on there uh, to kind of see how they do these holsters and everything but basically you got an alien skin and then underneath you have a stainless steel plate so as you can hear right there that's a stainless steel plate that is supporting from around here to all the way where the holster would be and it actually has little loops inside where the hardware is put through and the thing about this is it's copying kind of the, uh, not the technology, but the construction of the Cloak Tuck 3.5, which basically eliminates the hardware from being exposed. Now, if you look at some older versions, this is one where it has non-perforated neoprene, and under here, it also still has the uh, uh, stainless steel, but the stainless steel is in a smaller area. It's basically a square piece. It doesn't go up to this area right here. Now the reason why they lifted it up higher was obviously to prevent drooping. Like in these leather ones, you get some drooping where uh, basically you're gonna get sagging like this and there's really not much support. So uh, it'll fade over time. The fitment won't be as good. You'll have to take these down to keep a better fit, you know, etc. So that was really the goal is to eliminate that. Now <clears throat> behind the a stainless steel plate is you have a ballistic nylon. Now, I'm 
guessing the ballistic nylon is really to back this up. Uh, this uh, perforated neoprene, which is really good for ventilation. When you have this against the body, it ventilates very well. <clears throat> it dries out very quickly. So if you're working in the rain, that's a good thing. Uh, so uh, typically regular neoprene is not going to ventilate that well. It'll stay wet for longer, but it's going to insulate a, a little better. But, you know, if it's against your body and sweating and stuff. But this will dry out, so it'll prevent it from becoming a hot spot. So, anyways, this construction is very solid, no leather, and it's obviously wearing pretty well. And the stainless steel keeps it nice and rigid, and it prevents it from drooping. So, uh, also, right here, the material is still flexible to kind of curve around your belt, and I'll go ahead and put in a picture. So, as in that picture, you saw that it kind of it goes around the belt. It doesn't uh, go perfectly around it and stay completely tight around these edges here, but it does good enough to keep a nice low profile. And as you can see, this is actually pretty thin. And when you get the firearm in here, uh, pretty much from uh, right out of the right out of the bag, this thing is uh, nice and tight. Now, if we look at the seams here, uh, this is one area where I would be the most concerned. You can kind of see that it's not exactly perfect all the way around it cuts kind of close and as you can see here it just goes all the way all the way through and then you got this joint uh, joined area right here now this has not frayed at all um, when they stitched my older one as you can see here it was stitched pretty well but the neoprene did fade a little bit and so I appreciate this extra touch of protecting that seam this was something uh, that's on the 3.0. <clears throat> it's a good holster, but uh, with using it a lot and having a lot of friction up against the body, the neoprene can give way, and you can see the ballistic nylon under there. So, yeah, you can see the layers. So this is really good for closing it off and, and keeping it nice and uh, uh, protected. So it's going to give you a long life. However, um, one thing before we get to the shell is you can see the hardware here for the belt. It it's basically concealing all the hardware you got rounded points right here but on this one um, I actually had the hardware uh, walk out on this one from drawing and I'll put in a video right here <clears throat> now this is not necessarily a complete negative of this but I would cautious, uh, caution any user to keep an eye on this level of the screws right here. And you you have your own hardware that comes with this, and I'll show you a little bit later. But make sure it's not walking out. The one criticism I have of Alien Gear is that if you're going to uh, provide something that uses hardware, um, I would recommend... Uh, here, here's the thing. You either provide something like uh, some Loctite... I know some manufacturers actually do that for their holsters, uh, or um, go ahead and just put a little bit of Loctite on these uh, to where they're not walking out. Most people are not even going to think of this. Uh, for me, I would put a little fingernail polish or just keep an eye on it. Fingernail polish can act as a little Loctite, but <clears throat> you know that's a quick remedy. It doesn't see that much wear, but uh, from uh, out of the bag, it's not tightened down too much, especially on these. So you might want to adjust your retention. The good thing about this is it offers this uh, alien skin is it offers good retention. It's nice and rubbery. However, when it comes to drawing, it's very smooth. It locks into the shell very well. And uh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, basically uh, this shell is very versatile and the shells typically are very versatile and they're inexpensive to swap out so I have a couple of unique firearms here this is a, as you, you guys who have a PO7 notice this profile this is a PO7 holster so I have a pistol here that is similar to the <clears throat> profile of the PO7 but not quite <clears throat> and this is a SAR, 9, uh, SAR CM9 and it actually will lock into this holster albeit tight but uh, it will lock in it has the same barrel length and all and also I do not have a holster for the TP9 series I can't exchange it out uh, the good thing is you can exchange out 
uh, <clears throat> holster shells, just fill out a form and make sure that you go online and uh, provide proof that you did purchase the holster from them because that's part of the warranty is you actually have free exchanges and this one actually locks in but it's mostly the trigger guard locking in and uh, the barrel length of the PO7 is shorter than this uh, TP9DA but it still locks in so it is pretty versatile as long as the trigger guards uh, are matching <clears throat> the only thing I don't see a shell for that I know of people actually carrying inside and outside the waistband is this pistol right here um, uh, the TP9DA and the TP9SF are not specifically named by name, uh, so that's uh, something where you're going to kind of have to improvise. However, <clears throat> this one does not have a holster. The closest one that you're going to get is 92A or um, an M9A1 or whatever. Uh, so you're kind of SOL if you're wanting to carry a gun like this, especially in the outside the waistband holster. So that brings me to the uses that this holster will have for the end user. So for me, what I see with this holster is if you go online to Alien Gear, they have a, a basically where you buy two holsters. They have a, a basically a bulk deal pack where uh, you can buy two holsters for a very inexpensive price. So uh, what you're getting is you can pick an outside the waistband holster and an inside the waistband holster and I would recommend the 3.5 to kind of keep it uh, consistent but if you guys take training um, uh, basically what you can do is you can have an outside the waistband holster which typically a lot of instructors like to have you use basically you're getting the same sensation as far as the draw and retention and everything all the experience with this level one retention holster uh, that you'd be getting with the out inside the waistband so it's also good for just going to the range if you like to open carry like here in Alaska open carry is legal and also you can conceal a firearm depending on the shell you're using uh, you can conceal a firearm that's on an outside the waistband belt uh, in, in a holster if you're wearing a jacket uh, but you want to make sure the jacket is going to allow you to draw pretty easily without uh, you know too much issue but uh, with all that said, I do actually find this to be useful uh, here, uh, patrolling around uh, my yard in the wintertime, summertime, whenever, because I got dog issues and uh, other wildlife issues uh, that uh, tend to be a little <clears throat> destructive on my property. But anyways, also uh, walking in the woods and stuff like that, going hunting, this would be a good holster for that level when retention is is okay as long as you tighten it down appropriately and this provides almost a perfect retention without sacrificing your ability to draw so I do appreciate that that is one thing that is good about uh, hybrid holsters and also the other thing is it balances out pretty well you do have it pretty wide on the belt holster so it's not going to be rocking back and forth because it's uh, constricted to one area so it's pretty generous on how uh, wide it is so it allows it to be pretty comfortable and not pinch so much so <clears throat> or feel like you have a, a kind of a brick on one side and it distributes the weight pretty well so uh, with all that said um, if you want to open carry this that's on you uh, if you wish but uh, uh, that's not really something I do but everybody else everybody gets to choose what they want to do Okay, so uh, the next thing I want to talk about is um, basically the overall uh, uh, kit that you're getting with this and basically my interpretation of the value. So here's the bag that this thing comes in. As you can see, Alien Gear holsters, premium comfort, superior concealment. They're uh, big on you know the fact that it's made in the USA and that they have a lot of... Um, Basically, they, they're very proud of having the employees that put this together and have a lot of pride in making the holsters a good quality. So here's the thing. Ehlinger has gotten into actually testing their own holsters, and uh, uh, they have they do a lot of in-house testing, and they've actually done a lot of video footage. This is a far cry, uh, a big upgrade from uh, when I was ordering these inside the waistband holsters a while ago. I stepped away for a while because I was exploring other options, but I I have not found a lot of holsters that have uh, matched the quality and value. Uh, typically, if you're going to be getting a holster like this and outside the waistband holster, it's going to be all Kydex. You're going to be restricted on the kind of firearms you're going to have to pay. If you get a custom one, you're probably going to be paying about $100 each. 
The only uh, problem is you're not going to be uh, getting one that's going to be available for uh, uh, carry lights, which is becoming a big thing, or optics ready versions as far as I know. But anyways, as far as hardware, you get the bags uh, with them, and it's pretty much the same old Alien gear that it used to be, however, the one change is you get an instruction manual, and you kind of get a little pride sticker and a little card uh, encouraging you to leave a review. It's always good for marketing is have the customers actually review it instead of uh, just uh, uh, going out and promoting a product. So as usual, you get these rubber uh, pieces that uh, basically are your little buffers right here that keep tension on the screws and uh, are good for weight retention. And you get spare parts here. Now, if you uh, saw that uh, little clip of uh, this area, this was this is not in the extra hardware um, that you. If you lose it, uh, you don't have an extra one. And this piece did fall on the ground when it came undone. So I'd have, I'd have been SOL. So uh, one thing I would say for Alien Gear is uh, just at least provide one in here. I mean, you have this little piece right here that's extra and you have extra screws for the different sizes if you need to tighten it up uh, like if you're switching shells I imagine but I mean I, I would provide extra an, at least one extra piece uh, for the backing here for the clip so anyways that's my recommendation now as far as the instructions go uh, basically quick start assembly discussing how to basically assemble it if like if you get a new shell where to position it so uh, what it's really designed for and tips on retention how to adjust it for retention and also how to wear it how to put it on pretty simple uh, and then of course their disclaimer so yeah it's, it's a pretty common sense uh, you know, set of instructions, but for people that aren't really familiar with how to use these types of holsters, it's a pretty good uh, start. So, anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it as far as uh, my review of the Alien Gear holsters. It's a pretty good, um, I guess you could say, upgrade to uh, what they used to be, uh, stepping away from the leather and going to something that's completely different that you're not seeing other manufacturers doing, where you're basically using synthetic materials that uh, add rigidity and solve a lot of the problems you had with hybrid holsters that kind of made it unattractive to begin with, leather and hybrid holsters. Though there are some loyalists to leather, so Alien Gear is still providing that as an option in their, uh, in their product line, which is always good because... I know we always hate to lose those um, that gear or those um, products that basically were our favorite, and they might have been really popular to begin with. But anyways, this is a very versatile system. It comes in at a great value, and I recommend it for anybody that is looking for an outside the waistband holster. You don't really need to go with all Kydex. This actually does pretty much the same thing, if not a little better. A nice low profile of course it's not like a duty holster or anything but uh, for the average uh, citizen I don't think that it's a, a real disadvantage to go with this if you want to swap out shells it's like 15 uh, if you want to buy a shell it's like $15 but if you want uh, to just swap them out you pay the shipping to send it in and you know it'll be um, it'll be a swap with a little form they just need to know what kind of shell you want and uh, basically proof of purchase so with all that said uh, that is the cloak belt holster by alien gear uh, let me know what you think in the comments if you have any experience or uh, what you think of this uh, from the information that i've given and also check out the article that i did on this holster in it'll be in the uh, in the description below and i appreciate you guys watching and you guys have a good one